Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for joining another Trout Freak video. Um, today we're going to be tying a fly um, that I think, in my opinion, is a great beginner fly to learn. Um, simply because it allows you to sort of get the feel of doing thread wraps. Um, and it's really just the, the basics of, of all fly tying techniques. Um, and this particular fly uh, it's called the Zebra Midge, um, which is a really small midge. I put on a little bit of a bigger hook here just for demonstration purposes, but you probably want to tie these in like a size 16 through 20, um, I think. So you got 16, 18, and 20. So basically the higher the number, the smaller the hook. Um, so I'm doing it, uh, I believe this one's on a 14. Um, again, just for visual uh, aspects. So. Uh, to get started, I'm using a black thread, uh, and I'm actually going to be using a 12 aught um, black wax thread from Semperfly, which is a fantastic thread. I some might argue that you should be using perhaps a 14 aught or like a 32 denier thread. Um, in reality, I wish I could have every thread possible. Um, I just I don't. So I basically use what I have and see if I can make it work. So let's get started. So first thing what I did was I put on a bead um, that I think is relevant in size to the size of hook. Uh, you could go bigger, you could go smaller. Uh, it's really just preference, I think. Um, a lot of, I think, fly tying enthusiasts might argue that it needs to be a specific size or a specific size of hook and thread size, etc. I do what works. I do what I think looks nice, what's worked for me in the past, what's caught fish, etc. So I think the, the, the key takeaway here is just kind of do what works for you and work with what materials you have at, at, at that time, right? So um, again, working with my 12 watt thread, I'm using black, I put my bead on now, secured it to my vise, and now I'm just gonna start with thread wrap starting from behind the bead here, and I'm gonna work my way just enough where it's secure, and I'm gonna nip away my thread, and now I'm gonna continue with my wraps a little bit. I am a very, very firm believer in the profile of the fly, meaning um, sort of what does that diameter, what does that body look like from back to front. Um, I like my midges specifically, um, and more the zebra midge as well, to be very, very thin as possible from the back with a little bit of a tapered and thicker body um, up to the collar or up to the bead to be a little bit thicker. So it's got that kind of like cone shape um, from the tail up to the head. Um, so I don't like to put as much thread wraps um, right away. Um, and then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be grabbing some wire um, for the ribbing. And I like to use uh, soft wire, and this is a, a size small. Um, you could go, you could, some could argue, you could go like with the ultra wire, which could be even thinner. I don't have silver ultra wire, so again, I'm working with what I got. And I'm just gonna take this off. And for the smaller flies, I find just kind of like one wrap, an unraveled wrap, and then where it's sort of where it kind of locks in is more than enough. And then I'll just cut that off. And I always like my wires nice and straight as possible. I also like to tie my wires under. The hook as much as possible so I'll rotate my vise a little bit I'll stick that wire sometimes as well within that bead to help just secure it in place and then with a light not too much tension just get that in position make sure I got it where I want it work my way back up because that's gonna be the thicker part that I want anyway work my way back down keeping the wire 
um, as close to the underbody of the hook as possible. And now I'll just do touching wraps to where I think might look nice. Um, I like my midges to sort of really get down to the bend of the hook here. And then I'll work my way back up. And now at this point, if you could use, if you use a thicker um, thread, it wouldn't be as much wraps. But this to me is probably the most important part of building this fly, because you're building the shape of the fly. This is that profile I was talking about earlier. So again, I like to leave as minimal as possible around the tail, but still keeping it um, within the shape that I want. And just checking the underbody, checking the different sides of the fly, making sure that it's making that profile that I want. That's looking close now to what I've been looking for. Again, everyone's style preference, what's worked for them is different. Thin profiles on my flies is what's worked for me and gives me confidence when I'm fishing. So I'll keep it like this for the most part. So that looks pretty good in my opinion. I think that's ready to go. That body looks pretty even, nice taper to it. And now what I'll do is I'll grab that wire and I'm just gonna start doing some spiraling wraps. I like to counter wrap everything. Some may argue you don't need to counter wrap all the time, but um, I like it. I think it looks good. And then I like to space my wraps. Again, relevant to the size of fly that you're tying, right? So this one, again, this hook size is a little bit bigger than I would traditionally use for the zebra midge. Um, so my spiral wraps are a little bit wider or thicker, I should say, than usual. And now what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping around the wire, keeping my thread tension to not loosen the wire. Those are some wraps in front and back. Again, really just securing that wire so it's not going anywhere. And then from there, you could do the technique where you bring your bobbin up to keep the tension and then helicopter this off. I, I don't do that, I just keep tension this way and then I'll helicopter that wire off. The thinner the wire, um, the more easily it'll snap off. And now from here, I could essentially just make a nice collar, do a whip finish and that thing is ready to go. Alternatively, you can get some Nice black dubbing, if I knew where my dubbing was. So here we are. And I got some like black ice dub. I'll, sometimes I'll put like a little bit just to give it some flash, give it some a nice little collar to it. So I'm gonna spin that dubbing on, slide it up. And I don't want too much, it's a small fly. And I'm gonna put that right around that. Bring that back. I like my bead nice and clean. And now that's, that looks ready to go. I'm gonna grab my whip finish tool. I like to do two, three turn whip finishes. So that's one. And then I'll do another one, two, three and that thing's ready to go. You can put head cement if you want. I traditionally don't with my zebra midges, but it never hurts. Um, but that, my friends, are the is a basic zebra midge. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you had some fun. Cheers.